the war with the labyrinth that went on for decades ended in victory for the ones above ground. The tens of thousands of labyrinth masters released their prisoners of war after their loss. Amongst them were babies who were born in the labyrinth. With their mothers already dead, they were raised with monster's milk. These children held otherworldly powers and were too strong to be considered human. As humanity called them Dungeon Baby, a boy and girl are filming the labyrinth and the girl asks the boy to focus the camera on a guy who seems to be their tour guide and also a dungeon baby. The boy says they are there to film the second floor of the labyrinth but she tells him it's been years since the labyrinth has been found, there's nothing to shoot anymore. The boy asks the girl that aren't Dungeon Babies well known because of the media. And the girl tells him not that not really and she says it's a chance for them to become millionaires since they are the first. The boy asks what they will be the first in. And the girl says she did a little bit of investigating and she asks the boy if he knows how dungeon babies are obsessed with dungeons. And she says apparently their tour guide is the only dungeon baby who refuses to even go near the labyrinth. That's also why he's the only dungeon baby whose level hasn't been revealed. The boy says isn't it just because he's just really weak and the girl says she hired guards just in case. The tour guide says they should go but the boy says it hasn't even been 10 minutes and the guide says it's dangerous there. They have to at least get to the second floor's entrance before taking a break. The guide says he's telling the girl again. She should tell the guards to avoid using guns even if they come across beasts. They should avoid conflict as much as possible. One of the guards says that he worries a lot, dungeon baby or Buddha baby whatever, he should just be sure to do a good job guiding them. They will protect all babies which makes all the guards laugh. The guide thinks that they are not understanding at all and during their small talk, someone in the labyrinth is being ripped to pieces. Jicer isn't some sketchy neighborhood. The boy sees a creature in the dark and asks what it is and the guide tells them it's an underbeast, commonly seen on the first floor of Jicer, and he says it's injured. They should leave before the smell if blood stick onto their clothes. Before he could finish what he's saying guards start preparing to shoot the beast. He tells them not to shoot but they shoot it anyways and the beast screams out loud before dying. The guards laugh and say it's nothing. The girl asks the boy if he got it and he says of course and one of the guys tells the guide that as he can see all moving things die when shot and another guard says he was nervous because he heard people die there. But they are just like any other animal. The guide says they should throw out what they don't need in return and one of the guards says the situation has been taken care of so what's H talking about and he asks him if he pissed himself or something. They hear a loud noise and one of the guards ask what's that sound and the guide tells them a predator heard the gunshots. It's still far away so if they run for the exit right away but the guards say they should fight and that they will probably be able to kill it if they get it on a tight path. And they should think about it. The one they just killed is worth millions of one so if they get two each, it will be more than 10 million for each of them. The guide thinks that this is their goal all along and he looks up and sees the blood on the guard's clothes and he says they should do as they wish. They'll stay away since they don't have weapons and the guards say what they kill is their pay, so he shouldn't try to ask for some later. The guide asks the rest to follow him. The girl says they need to film but the guide asks them to follow him. The guide walks away hurriedly and the children ask him to wait up. He asks the guide where they are going and says the filming is already screwed but he says no more filming, they are leaving. The girl says that's not what he said earlier and she thinks to herself that the reason he doesn't go near the labyrinth even though he's a dungeon baby is because he's a coward. The girl tells the boy they should go back and the boy asks why and she says they have to film them fighting. They spent so much money to get in there if they leave now they will be broke. They hear gunshots and people screaming. The guide says they should quiet down and move. They can't let them notice that the group's divided. The girl asks what's going on and the guide says the nearby predators heard the gunshots. The one killed first is a prey and the girl asks if he let them die knowing that and he says if he tried to convince them they'd also be dead right now. The blood scent would have been on the guard's clothes, so they would have gotten caught with them if they ran. Meanwhile, the boy is filming them and he turns the camera towards his feet and blood is on his shoe. As he turns the camera back up he sees a monster which eats him. The guide says it's a wolf monkey and he wonders what they're doing on the first floor. A whole group of them and they've already been caught up to and he wonders if they knew their location from the start. The girl is about to be attacked by one of the wolf monkeys and the guide runs towards her and grabs a knife from her bag which he uses in killing the wolf monkey and he throws the knife at another on trying to attack the girl from behind and he grabs the girl and tells her he's going to run at the pace she expects of a dungeon baby and also tells her a few ribs might break but she should just deal with it, then he runs off very fast. The guide tells the girl it seems they have gotten away, they might chase after so they should hurry. The girl asks him why he let the others die, he's strong to utilize a dull knife so why? The guide tells her she seems to be misunderstanding something, 
He was hired as a guide not a guard and he asks her if there's something in the contract that said he should fight but girl tells him people still died and he says that's Jicer for her. The guide tells her, she's the one who hired a bunch of arrogant idiots who have never been down there before. They did everything he said not to so what does she mean, why he didn't save them. If they had just listened to him from the start, they would have lessened the damage. No, they wouldn't even have run into the beasts. The girl asks why he saved her and he says if she dies who will pay him. He's still working so she needs to pay, he will keep her alive. A fire suddenly comes on revealing a snake wrapped around a sword. The guide says it's a labyrinth emblem and that he just ran in any direction. But they ended up in the labyrinth. He thinks that they have to get out of there but the floor cracks and the guide and the girl fall through. The guide wakes up and realizes his left hand is broken and he says he guesses it could have been worse. He says he doesn't think the girl would have survived a fall from that height but he says more than that he's screwed. He has fallen into the center of the labyrinth. He wonders what the place is and says there are no sign of activity and he wonders if it's an abandoned labyrinth. He comes across another labyrinth emblem and the snake on the emblem comes to life and bites his hand before he could react. He says he can't die there and a voice says he will inherit the ominous dungeon. The guide wakes up and he says he's alive but he definitely saw the venom spread. He's broken arms fine too and it's not just his arm his whole body's been healed and where he is seems like somewhere near the first floor entrance. He sees the girl lying on the floor in front of him. He calls her Yunju and says she's still breathing. But her injuries are still serious. He says there's no first aid kit. And there's no one nearby and he says he guesses it wasn't because someone helped him and he carries Yunju out. The guide gets back home and what happened in the dungeon was being talked about on the news and they referred to him as Mr. Kim. Kim says it hasn't even been two hours since they got out, news sure spreads fast. Kim says at least it was on video that the guards didn't listen to him. If it wasn't for the camcorder he would have been fined. He brings out an envelope says he left the first part of the payment in Hyunji's room so she must have seen it and he says he'll give that to her real quick. Hyunji comes out and Kim says what's with her expression and asks her if she was crying. Kim says to himself he guess she just saw the money. It's a loft money for her so it makes sense to cry out of joy. Kim gives her the second envelope and tells her to use that too for her wedding and she shouldn't ask him how he got it. He didn't do anything bad. Their father comes out and asks what's going on. Kim asks him if it was his day off. His father says what kind of misbehaved son and he says he heard he went to go earn money risking his life. So he abandoned work and came home. His father asks Hyunji to return the money to Kim and he asks Kim if he thinks his parents are so useless that he'd have to risk his life to marry off his sister. Kim says he doesn't know what he means and says it's not like the convenience store is a battlefield. He just earned the money working consistently. His father screams enough and says he knows they are not related by blood. But he's underestimating him too much and asks him if he thought he really wouldn't find out. Kim says he's sorry and Hyunji returns the money to him and leaves. His father says he thought he raised him well, but he has grown to be very selfish and also says he knew raising a child is the hardest job there is. Kim tells his father he gave Hyunji that money because he wanted to. He doesn't have anything to spend the money on anyway, why don't they just use it for her wedding? His father tells him that if she knew that the money was earned by risking his life, she wouldn't have accepted it and he tells him he's a part of the family too, so he should not upset them like that. His father tells him to go in and rest and make sure it doesn't ever happen again. Kim says adopting an orphan from the dungeon also known as a dungeon baby gets you a significant amount of money. There have been many incidents where people adopted children just for the money in mind and abused the child which would end in the murder of the parents. Compared to that he can say he was lucky. Because he met a real family, there have issues because of Hyunji's marriage though. There's this tattoo on his arm that he's never known the origin of and when he touches it, it shows a green panel with his stats. There's a few things he found out using the internet. The green panel looks a lot like what you'd see in games. Naga's labyrinth is probably referring to the labyrinth where he got bit by the snake and he wonders if an abandoned labyrinth chose him as its master. He says the portal thing is also in games and there's something new on the portal and he says it wasn't there before so he clicks it and he gets transported to a labyrinth. Kim says it's the place from before but says it's a but says it's a bit different so it's a different place. Kim is attacked by the snake but he dodges and wraps it in his jacket. Kim calls it a bastard and says does he think he will fall for the same trick twice. Kim says that was only a temporary measure. He's strong enough to easily rip through cloth so he needs a weapon to fight him with. The snake says 18,230 snakes releaser, the one to inherit the underground and sit upon the throne of Naga. And he says Kim is too small and inferior to handle the weight of the crown. But he's not in the condition to hold back the flow of time, so he shall think of this too as fate. 
Kim asks what he's talking about and also asks if he's the labyrinth's master and the snake calls him Glorious Naga's new king and wish him luck. Kim says he hates labyrinths and he has never glanced at them for years. He only went in once for Hyunji's wedding fee. And he says annoying things keep happening and he should have listened to his parents' advice and stayed away from labyrinths. Kim hears Hyunji's voice from outside his room through the portal asking him if he's in the room and if they can talk for a bit by he tells her to wait a bit that he's changing. Kim looks at the portal and says he would have never thought sound could come through. Hyunji tells Kim she's coming in and he asks her to wait and he rushes through the portal back to his room and he says it definitely felt like his body was breaking but there's no wrong with his body. Kim opens the door and Hyunji asks him what was the noise and why he's sweating so hard and he didn't even get changed. Hyunji sees his laptop and asks if he games now excitedly but Kim says it's only a stream. Hyunji says she didn't think her uptight brother would interested in something fitting for his age and she says he has no hobbies and he'd just space out for hours in his room when he was a kid too. Kim says she's not really wrong. After leaving the labyrinth, he struggled to stop thinking about the place. The piece he wasn't used to felt rather uncomfortable to him. The reason other dungeon babies are still pulled to the labyrinth is probably because of this too. Kim asks Hyunji what's up and she says she's sorry. She didn't know he went back in that place because of her and she says she's really sorry. Kim says he was wondering what was up and he says it's really fine and that she should take and he reaches for his coat pocket and he remembers he left his coat in the labyrinth. He asks Hyunji to wait outside a little bit. Kim says in the coat is the money and as he looks through the portal he sees a monster taking the money from his coat. Kim tells Hyunji was so into the game that everything that happened the day before went completely blank and he tells her, he would like to enjoy his first, new hobby and he closes the door. Kim goes back through the portal into the labyrinth, picks up his coat and searches it but everything is there except Hyunji's money. A message pops up on the green panel informing him that while he was away an imp came and stole his money. To find the imp he must finish synchronization. Kim screams out in anger wondering why an imp would steal a piece of paper. Kim sits on the throne and touches the orb which makes different panels pop up and he's asked if he wants to continue with synchronization. Kim says the marble seems to be functioning like the tattoo on his arm, but he says it doesn't matter and he clicks yes. Another panel pops and it shows that his qualification is being checked after his qualification has been checked. Another panel pops up saying that he Jinwoo is qualified to be Naga's king and it starts synchronization. A voice sounds in Jinwoo's head telling him that 18,230 snakes nest Naga's labyrinth has registered him as its master and it reorganizes the labyrinth according to Jinwoo's synchronized data and it says synchronization complete. The labyrinth is completely changed and Jinwoo says it's better than before, though it's still dark and creepy. A green panel pops up showing Naga's labyrinth facilities. Jinwoo says there aren't much change except for the gate on the stat window and he says that must be the labyrinth's entrance. Jinwoo looks towards the gate and he sees the imp. He grabs the imp by its neck and says he didn't think it'd dare to come back. Jinwoo tells it to give him back his money before he kills it. Jinwoo realizes it doesn't have the money, but the imp is holding a down gem in its hand. Down gems are special gems only found in Jicer. They can be buried deep in the ground, or they could be hidden within a rare plant that grows within Jicer. However, it is bare impossible to find with the given methods, and usually, people kill dangerous beasts to obtain them. Down gems are therefore priced ridiculously high. Jinwoo thinks that something that is barely one carat is worth millions of one, and it is about the size of a thumb. It's got to be around tens of millions of one. Jinwoo squeezes the imp's neck tighter which makes it reveal another down gem on his second hand. Jinwoo squeezes its neck more which makes it throw the down gems up. Jinwoo lets go of the imp to catch the down gems but he only catches one and the imp escapes. Jinwoo says well whatever. He got two gems then a bright light appears from behind him. A panel pops up saying he has sacrificed a middle rank down gem so the damage durability of the labyrinth will be restored and will proceed with an upgrade. Jinwoo screams that on whose permission and tries to grab the gem but it's gone another message pops up telling him there's 24 hours until the durability restoration and he has 72 hours left to raise the labyrinth's rank. Jinwoo says the gem was worth a car. Four days later, despite the worries they had about Hyunji's wedding, with many people's blessings it went well thanks to the in-law's generosity. And he was also able to sell the down gem at a reasonable price after a bit of negotiating. He sold it for 18 million. In his room Jinwoo says the price fell lower than he expected, but it should be enough for a wedding gift. He says it will be an issue if his father finds out, so he'll have to give it to her directly or something and he says he can't believe a piece of rock is worth 18 million. 
Jinwu checks the time left until the labyrinth's upgrade will be completed and it remains 24 seconds. Jinwu says the gems would have worth 36 million if the labyrinth didn't steal one from him. But he says there's no point in regretting the past and he will just have to hope it's worth the money. A message pops up saying the labyrinth's upgrade is complete and Jinwu opens the gate to the labyrinth. Different messages pop up in front of Jinwu and there's one which says, Facility Naga Nest has been created near his chamber. A room appears where the wall was blocking and Jinwu wonders if that is Naga Nest. Jinwu says it's pretty empty. He expected a more sticky and wet environment since they are reptiles. Some things appear behind Jinwu and he thinks it's a dungeon beast but a message pops up in front of him saying six rank one Naga workers have appeared in the facility, Naga Nest. Naga workers will be summoned each time the labyrinth's rank advances. The workers are small snakes and Jinwu says it's definitely not what he was expecting and the panel tells him the workers await his command. Jinwu says he knows well what a low-level worker should do since he was also an excavator. Jinwu says three of them will act as scouts. They should draw a map with the labyrinth in the center and investigate the nearby risk factors, resources, ecology, and such, and they should also avoid battle as much as possible and prioritize survival. The three leave and Jinwu says originally they should act with guards, but he doesn't have any and he tells the rest of them to dig a wall opposite the nest to create a storage. Jinwu says he doesn't have any expectations from them. They are short and stout, so they won't be fast nor strong and he says he hasn't seen anything that looks more fit to be prey than them in Jiser. Jinwu is impressed. He didn't think three of them will be able to dig out a room under an hour, and the panel tells him storage has been built and a part of the Naga worker exploration team has returned. Only one returned and Jinwu asks if the rest were killed and he says he should have gone with them. Workers don't exist in the summon category like Naga military force so it's a permanent loss. Jinwu is surprised they are fine. The spoils were too much so he came to leave some and Jinwu says it's an honor he's worried. The panel tells him that the morale of four workers has increased so work efficiency has increased. The worker gives Jinwu a map and the labyrinth's map is automatically updated. And Jinwu says he guesses there's no need for him to run around trying to create the map and he says there are lots of things nearby. Jinwu tells the worker he gathered a lot of spoils, so he brought whatever he could and Jinwu says he doesn't know if he should be thankful because it looks like stuff from the past Jiser Great War times, but they are all outdated or seriously rusted. There's no proof of people having been there recently. Jinwu sees a down gem among the spoils and the worker says they saw more stuff like that and Jinwu tells him to go and get all of them and he should not forget to tell the others too. Jinwoo rushes towards the portal saying he has to go and get them evaluated but he waits and says if he leaves what will happen to the workers if the labyrinth gets artacked while he's not around. Jinwoo asks the worker if he's sure there are more down gems and he replies him. Jinwoo says it's true that the labyrinth is beneficial to him, whether it's money or an opportunity. The panel tells Jinwoo he has sacrificed one low rank down gem and two lowest rank down gem to the altar and the down gems are being replaced with labyrinth energy. Jinwoo says did he just trade tens of millions of one for mere possibility, and he says he tried so hard for the last five years to stop thinking about the labyrinth, but stepping inside once has made him obsessed but he thinks he gets it now, why dungeon babies are so obsessed, why they are trying to throw their lives at it. Other than the danger and darkness of Jiser, the uncomfortable feeling he felt endlessly while leading a safe and bright life above ground, that wasn't a matter of adjusting or something to get used to, that was just boredom. That's right he's bored out of his mind. Jinwoo says he will bring glory to the Naga Empire as they wish, a glory great enough to encompass the entire Jiser, and he summons Naga. The panel shows Jinwoo the units he can summon. Jinwoo says it's right to summon units to defend the labyrinth, but he didn't think there would be a maintenance fee so he can't carelessly spend on increasing units before he gets some more down gems. Jinwoo says he will summon one Naga soldier and one Naga maid and the panel tells him he has consumed one down gem energy to summon one Naga soldier. A Naga soldier holding a spear and shield appears and Jinwoo says he was wondering if a Naga soldier holding a sword will come out, but he looks pretty dependable. Jinwoo tells it to defend the storage with the workers at the gate. Jinwoo says just looking at its appearance, it has the physique to survive to the fifth floor. The panel tells Jinwoo he has consumed two down gem energy to summon one Naga maid and it also tells him that the mystery of Jiser has been activated. He has passed incredibly rare odds and a heroic rank Naga maid has been summoned. The maid appears and the panel tells him Naga maid has been summoned and she is incomparable to normal Naga maids. She is a true warrior that is dedicated to the honor of her master. Dominique calls Jinwoo telepathically and also speaks asking him what he wants her to do. 
Jinwoo explains everything to Dominique and she asks him to give her permission for the currently explored labyrinth map and he says okay. Dominique tells Jinwoo there is a load and a plant with a down gem nearby and she says they should see for themselves before maintaining it. So she wants to explain as they walk, and she asks him if that's okay. Jinwoo tells Dominique alright, he has to see for himself as well. They get there and Dominique tells Jinwoo it's a stalactite cave near the labyrinth and the cave wall is weak, so they can break the side that goes to the load and set up a gathering station in the opening under the stalactite cave. Dominique tells Jinwoo the load is right behind the wall, and that sometimes down gems can be mined as well, aside for the minerals that go to the forge. The gem-shaped plant inside is small but he can still harvest down gems and gyser plants have strong survivability, so they don't need to be maintained as well. Dominique says she will harvest them since they are there anyway. Dominique takes Jinwoo to an area that contains water and says they should secure the area as the territory of the labyrinth and she tells Jinwoo that the nearby passages are easy to defend. There is drinking water and they are positioned in the middle. Jinwoo asks Dominique what the dangerous looking mark on the map is and she says she thinks they're marked as territory of wild beasts. In the map, it looks like a large area blocked all over but it seems like the workers confirmed that there were beasts there and retreated. Depending on the beasts, they could set up a hunting area to help with maintenance costs. Jinwoo tells Dominique she's extremely incredible but she says it's as normal for a maid who helps with maintaining the library. Jinwoo tells her no need to be humble and he didn't even imagine there would be a naga that could give him advice and communicate with him. Jinwoo tells Dominique that as she knows, he's from the above world. He no intention of neglecting the labyrinth, but he will be in the above world a lot and Dominique says she understands his concerns but since there's no labyrinth core yet, there won't immediately be swarm after the labyrinth, but he has to be ready for anything in Jaiser. Dominique advises Jinwoo to increase the units and update the labyrinth as soon as possible, although he must consume that much more down gems and she asks her to do it for him. Dominique tells Jinwoo extracting the energy of down gems and summoning nagas can only be done by him the owner of the labyrinth. Jinwoo asks Dominique what happens if he doesn't meet their standards and she tells him there could be Nagas who leave or rebel. But even if a beast harms the labyrinth owner, they cannot absorb the labyrinth. Only the ones chosen by the labyrinth can be labyrinth owners and there isn't a new foolish enough to bring down the royalty who encompasses the entire Jaiser. Jinwoo says since there's a lot to do, they should stop the small talk and he says he looks forward to working with her, she says she will do her best. Jinwoo offers three good down gems to the altar, and the panel tells him the labyrinth upgrade is starting. Jinwoo goes to sell one of the down gems and buyer asks him where he found something like that because he heard the veteran explorers were barely roaming around after all the lower floor people went up and Jinwoo says he sees the first floor isn't doing well. The buyer says exactly the wolf monkeys that live on the 8th floor are starting to come out on the 1st floor and he says well the quality of explorers fell for 5 years and thanks to that the down gem supply has been lacking. The buyer says he won't ask Jinwoo where he got it but he asks him to contract solely with them and Jinwoo says okay but his condition is information on labyrinth. The buyer tells Jinwoo about hell spiders and tells him they're hard to face but they all have down gems and they're underground at the Paju gate but Jinwoo declines. The buyer says he heard Jinwoo has a family that he needs to support and he heard their situation wasn't that good. Jinwoo turns around and smashes his table with his legs asking him if he dies background check on him. 